A man and a woman have been arrested after a double shooting in Hamilton this morning. The shooting happened at George Street and Hess Street North just after midnight. Two male victims were rushed to hospital in stable condition. It's believed that they were shot at one location and then found by police at a second spot. So far, police have not released more information on the victims, but they did say that a gun was found. They are still investigating. Residents of a small Manitoba community are being asked to lock their doors and windows today. This after gunfire erupted late last night and sent one RCMP officer to hospital. The Mounties say it happened in a town about 100 kilometers north of Brandon, Manitoba. Police haven't commented on what led up to the gunfire, but they say that they are now on the hunt for two or three suspects who are believed to have split up with some fleeing on foot and others reportedly in a pickup truck. The RCMP says these suspects are armed and dangerous. Well, donations are pouring in for the 1,500 residents displaced by a massive fire at a downtown high-rise last week. Over 300 kids will receive back-to-school supplies, courtesy of corporate donations. The Red Cross has received over $32,000 in financial donations. The residents of the Parliament Street building could be displaced for months, so housing is still needed. For details on how you can help, you can go to our website, that's citynews.ca. Coming up just after 7 o'clock this morning here on BT, lawyer Bob Aaron will discuss potential legal battles ahead for the residents. Well, after October 1st, Ontario residents will see a drop in their natural gas bill as Premier Doug Ford stays focused on repealing the federal carbon tax. It has nothing to do with protecting the environment. It just is one more way for the government to line its pockets and gouge the people of Ontario. The province says families will save roughly $80 per year, but not everyone is happy about Ford's continued actions to dismantle cap and trade and eliminate the carbon tax. Sarah Buchanan, program manager at Environmental Defense, said the program actually helped people use, use less natural gas in the first place. These changes brought uh, long-term cost savings instead of short-term bill adjustments. Uh, and they also brought in big reductions in carbon pollution uh, to fight climate change. So it was a win-win uh, way of, of reducing bills while also fighting climate change. Well, the federal government is working on a national plan to fight climate change that would replace Ontario's cap-and-trade program with its own carbon tax. The province has joined with the government of Saskatchewan in a court case to challenge that effort. Well, a big decision expected today from the Federal Court of Appeals that may determine the future of the Trans Mountain Pipeline. Dozens of lawsuits have been launched against the project since its inception, with the largest being whether or not the federal government consulted First Nations before approving that pipeline. Shareholders with Kinder Morgan are also making a big decision today as they prepare to vote on whether or not they approve the sale of the Trans Mountain Pipeline to the Canadian government for $4.5 billion. Well, it is back to the bargaining table in Washington this morning as Canada and the U.S. continue to hammer out a new NAFTA deal. Foreign Affairs Minister Christia Freeland and U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer worked into the wee hours last night negotiating issues that could have a big impact on Canada, like dairy and the auto industry. The marathon trade talks have been productive with both sides expressing optimism about reaching a deal by tomorrow's deadline.